Hi, sorry I can't be with you today, um, but I'd love to show you how to use the amazing Mandala Dot Art Kit that you've got on your screens. So, uh, first I'll tell you what's in, in the kit. Um, so you get this bag and it's got, it's a really sturdy little zip bag, so that's a bonus. Um, and you can keep everything in. And then within there you will find lots of things. So first off, we've got um, lots of paint brushes. Um, these are actually really lovely brushes, all flat end, um, well, four flat ends and four round brushes. So these are great for adding detail or um, adding to your dot art pictures or just general painting and crafting. So these are great. You get those. You also get your dotting rods, which are plastic sort of um, rolling pins almost. And they've just got different size this all different sizes so you can get a variety of size dots and these are going to be to create your larger dots that you can't create with your um ball end tools okay so you get how many of these are there so there's eight of these all different sizes and then you'll get oh and by the way these are so pretty when you roll them look they look amazing so just for that alone um and then you get a variety of your um, let's start with these ones. You get a variety of um, sort of, of the of the sort of shaping tools, which you might know as shaping tools, but these in are used for dotting. So at this end, you've got your different size dots. So they go up in increments, so smaller to larger. So you've got a variety of dots and sizes that you can make with those. At the other end of these paler blue ones, you've got your rubber end tools, which are brilliant. These are great. I love these for mixing. These are great also for creating different techniques and swishes and swirls in your paint. Um, and you'll use them as across lots of different craft projects. So these are brilliant. And then you also get these um, larger um, tools. So these have got your larger ball tools on. Now, um, in general, with the dot art, you're probably not going to go up much um, more than I would imagine these these two um, because you'll find that when we do the dots it's basically dotting with this end so you're not using the whole ball so when it comes to up into these sizes this is when you probably switch to your rods rather than your ball ends okay so we get those anyway and again these are great in lots of different craft projects um, sugar craft um, paper tooling, leather tooling, and um, you'll see them used in lots of different ways. Really good quality and really weighty. And then you get your um, mixing tray, your palette, which is always good for mixing your different colours and getting the consistency of your paint correct. So this is um, vital. And then you also get some stencils. Now I've, my pack's been opened and well used. So um, you get these these different stencils that give you these different layouts. Now you can use them um, as the stencil as they are. So you can sort of paint in and get that, that finish. Or you can use them to sort of help guide your dots um, if you don't want to do any measuring. So you can use these to help guide your dots. I've used, um, I'll show you which one this one is. We come to, so we've got like a snowflake version as well. These lovely sort of radiating out fronds. You've got this one, which is probably my favourite. I love working with this one. Um, it's, it's a really lovely shape on its own. Um, and here is this one. It's in the background. So if, I just faintly did this one in the background on this um, particular box. So I did the background black and then used grey on top. And then, so you just get this very faint, almost shadowing. And then I use that to do my dots within those lines. So it just acted as a guide. There's that one. We've got this one, which is also a lovely shape. And I've used that one in here to create, looks like little leaves as I've gone round. So I've used it onto this hexagonal box just as a foundation to dot within. And then we've got uh, lots of other ones. We've got this lovely one here. Let me take that white background, you can see that clearer. You've got this lovely one, and then you've got this one with the dots and the arrows. And again, this is great for dot placement. So even if you just used it to sort of mark these spaces out, and then that's where you dotted, that gives you a great foundation. 
So we've got this one, which is very pretty. And then this one with the roses, which is really lovely as well. Okay, so you get you get quite a comprehensive set of stencils. And then in addition in this pack that we didn't have last time, are these lovely, this lovely set of paints. So you get this set of paints here. You see, I've been I've been playing with mine, made them a bit messy. But what you also get, so you get they're just a pan pan paint. So these aren't these aren't necessarily used for your dotting, um, but these are great for doing your backgrounds and sort of priming surfaces or just giving you that nice watery colour look as a background for your dotting. So I've used this on the wood. You see here, I've used the watered down paint here to almost give me a wood stain which has worked really nicely. And then a bit heavier, a few coats on the top to give me that graduated. So I've got the white in the middle and graduated out with these soft blues and greens. And that's given me that lovely background. So they're great as a base. And um, this one here as well, is good, is, I've used this um, sort of ochre color here to color this box, just give it a bit of a, a lift. And these pigments, one here, this one as well, I've painted. So you can see how strong those pigments are. They're really good. And the other addition um, to this is this pen. So this is um, a water pen uh, or a water brush. And basically you put your water in, in the bottom here, in the bottom there. And you can sort of, what it allows you to do is sort of graduate your color. So if I was to pick up some blue, um, and then keep continually brushing and then just pushing and squeezing more water through. It will give me that lovely sort of graduation of colour. So really um, useful addition in this kit and a real bonus. So that's that's there and we'll, we'll work with the pen in a minute just to help us drop the water into our paints. So I'm not going to, I'm going to show you how to set up and do some dot um, artwork. Let me just show you a few pieces. I've got so I've got this box here. So these boxes are ideal for dotting onto. Lovely um, small surface to decorate. I've got this one here as well. And then this one, a few different colours, just experimenting. And then this one. So some I've done mandala style. Um, so working from the centre and round and some I've worked from the outside and in. Um, so you can you can sort of work however however you want. And then I'll show you a few examples of pieces of jewellery as well, because of course, you know, you can change the size of your dots and therefore you can scale up or down for pieces of jewellery. So this is um, a wooden template. This is one of the ones that um, I designed with Debbie Bolford, this shape. And then it creates the perfect sort of space to dot into. So there's that piece. There's this piece which is a bit more modern and contemporary so just um dotting in bits of green here and there just to sort of contrast with that orange and black so it's that one i've got lots of pieces actually because once you get started you generally just can't stop so there's another one this is using the metallics metallic paints uh what else have i got i've got another shield here Got so many pieces they're all tangled up together this lovely metallic shield uh, not metallic shield this lovely shield shape again here quite a tribal look on this one and then just some you know very simple earrings these wooden beads are great for just adding your own flourish to so you know you can just add your own bit of interest and um, uniqueness to your to your wooden jewelry by dotting onto it okay so there's Lots of different ideas, and there'll be pictures up later of all of these as well. Okay, so what I thought I'd show you is how to get started, um, talk to you a bit about the paints and mixing your paints ready to work with, and then we'll go from there. So I've got, um, I'm going to use the Indigo Blue paints because you may have had these in the past from um, Jewelry Maker. We've used them lots of times in different projects. And here I've got um, Goldfinger pheasant bronze and miss money penny so basically it's a it's a a gold a bronze and a and a copper okay so i'm going to use those just to show you the techniques now these are great because they're nice they're an acrylic paint and they're ideal for craft projects and they're they're quite thin and runny so what i'm going to do is just show you how to go about mixing them 
ready for your dot art painting so let's take a little blob of each now a little bit goes a long way so unless you're mixing unique colors I would say just do a bit at a time because you'd be surprised um, at how little you use so I'm going to use my rubber tip one of my rubber tip um, ends here just to scoop some paint out and pop it into the one of the wells so I'm just gonna pop a bit in there just a little bit okay and then of course you will I didn't mention this you will need a pot of water to rinse and swirl your brushes and um, ball tools in between each and then a rag or some tissue to wipe away any excess so let's put a bit of the bronze in this one Okay. Again, I'm just going to swell off each time just to stop any contamination of colour. And then we've got this gorgeous copper, which it's no surprise if I tell you this one's my favourite. Okay. Okay, so the other thing, so when we, we're going to mix these, we're going to dilute these down a little bit so they're a different consistency, which is easier for dotting with. If we went straight in like this, we'd get quite lumpy dots and with, with peaks. So as we dot the paint on, we get little peaks in the paint or dimples. Now, you're not going to completely avoid that because, you know, sometimes your paint, as it dries as well, it thickens. So as you're working, you might get a slightly different consistency. But to start with, we're going to dilute these. So um, here, if we imagine this is three parts um, paint, I'm going to pop one part water in roughly. But every paint you use will differ because it will be different thickness. Now, this is quite a thin acrylic anyway. Um, and so um, I don't need much. But if you are using artist acrylics, then you'll probably need more water because they're generally thicker. You see how I could use that pen just to that um, brush just to drop the bits of drop bits of water in to really control it. That's so that pen's lovely for that as well. And then mixing, we want to avoid getting too much but too many bubbles. And so what I'd suggest is use your rubber tip because that sort of there's no air in there in the paintbrush. There's lots of air between the bristles and you end up with with bubbles. So use something like a rubber tip or use your rubber tip um, tools and just mix those up so it, you can see it's quite runny but not so runny that it would just fall off of your tool when you pick it up but not so thick that so thick that you get peaks in it okay so that's looking about right we can test it before we start so you can make sure you get it get it just right so that one's mixed well you see it's quite it's still quite thick and it's sticking to my um, rubber tip end. It's not falling off, but it's sort of um, nice and runny as well. So I'm going to give that a, a rinse and then we'll do the next. We've just mixed all of these so that they're ready to use. Now, um, there's not much contrast with these colours. So um, it's always nice to have a contrast as well. Um, even just to dot around the outsides, maybe black or white as a nice neutral to dot around um, to help lift to help lift your um, your images, or your pictures, or your patterns. So last one, mix this one. Okay, so they look roughly the same consistency each maybe that bronze one might be a bit thicker but we'll leave it and we'll see we'll see how it goes if it's too thick we'll know okay <clears throat> so then we're going to start dotting now um you'll need to, to make your dot art look um if you wanted to do something like this a man mandala style piece or um something like like this one, you'll probably want some guidelines to work with. So this one's just got the cross guideline and then I worked from the corners in. Um, so it's best to mark yourself some, some guidelines. So you'll need a pencil or something that you can easily remove, a chalk pencil or something that you can easily remove the lines from. So I'm working straight onto wood here. It's not primed. 
um, this is straight onto the wood on this one um, but it was easy to rub the pencil marks away I think you can see you can't can't see them there so pencil marks are pretty easy to get rid of okay and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to I've just all I've done because I've I've used up all my boxes so what I've done is I've drawn a round one just so that I can show you how I how I went about creating this this design in with this hexagonal shaped box so all I've got all I'm going to do these are great the hexagonals are much easier than squares are much easier to work with because um they're easy to draw point to point with your with your ruler so the circles take a bit more working out and that's where your stencils come in really handy so we're just going to draw from corner we're going to take a line from corner to corner to help help give us guidelines to get this nice um space to work in like this and then if you want to you can then um, give yourself little markers along that line as well. So if we go to the centre um, and put your marker at the centre, you can then mark out sort of centimetre markers along. So depending on the design you, you're doing, you could do that too. So that helps you um, with planning and mapping out and putting your dots in the right place. Now, dot art isn't something you do quickly. It's something you take your time with and you relax with, and um, while away, while away the hours with. So don't try and rush through. Take your time, and just enjoy the pattern sort of evolving and growing. And sometimes you get to a point with the pattern that you think, oh, I don't know what to do here, and um, but. Just keep going with it because it will it will grow and evolve in the process of doing it is so enjoyable even if at the end you're not entirely happy you can you can just enjoy the process be in the moment okay so i've got my lines drawn out i've got my markers and i've um mapped every where i'm going to put everything so i'm going to start with a, a large dot in the center so i'm going to choose one of my one of my um dotting rods here so i'm going to go with this this purple one so we're thinking about the scale of the piece it's only a small area we're dotting into so we don't necessarily want a giant circle in the center but actually maybe we want something a bit bigger so i'm going to go with this one here so i'm going to just pick pick one of my colors and all i'm going to do is make sure your your dotting rod isn't hasn't got any um, dry paint on because that will affect how flat it is so obviously I didn't clean this one well enough and um, so we want it make sure it's nice and flat and then we're going to just dip the rod straight into our paint so I'm just going to take my rod dip it straight down into the paint okay can you see how that's sort of pulled on the top just on the tip of that rod there and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it down. Now, I'm not going to push the rod straight onto the paper. I'm just going to push it down gently and then pick it back up. Okay, so it didn't go, I didn't touch the paper with it. If I touch the paper with it, you get that sort of wrinkly finish. Okay, so you just drop it down and just so that the paint sits on the paper, but not the actual tool. Okay. So we've got our first dot in and then we can start working around that dot. So maybe we want some smaller dots around the edge of that on each of these lines. So I'm going to go with that purple. So I'm going down a dot size now. So then I pick maybe a different color. So I go with the gold and again, I'm going to take that rod. So it's directly um, sort of onto the page. The, the tip of the rod is parallel to the page so not at an angle and I'm going to take it next to that line that first marker line and again don't touch the paper with the rod just with the paint and then pick up more paint so you pick up paint every time okay don't try and use the rod twice without putting more paint on okay because you'll have a different volume of paint which will give you a different size dot 
Okay, so you can see how slowly I'm working and, and also move your paper around or your object around rather than trying to go over the top, okay, because that will just help you be consistent and will help you not get your fingers in the paint and get smudges. Okay, so last one from the outside. Okay. So we've got, got our dots going all the way around. Clean clean your tool and pop it. Always I always like have an old rag that I can wipe it in. And um, toilet roll's okay or you know blue roll, but it you find you it gets um you know too solid all the time. So this this is good. And you can just pop these in a washing machine and um use them over and over. Okay, so we've got our basics. So now we can work into those. So again, just pick um, pick one of your tools. I've gone for the larger now of my um, pale blue, the ones uh, with the silicon tip on the other side. <clears throat> and I'm gonna pick another color. So I'm gonna pick this bronze now. And I'm gonna do a dot, a larger dot. So when I first pick up paint, the dot's going to, going to be the biggest dot, okay? So I'm going to pop it just at the top of you know, this gold dot I've done. And then I'm going to dot all the way around. I'm going to count the dots. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. And you can see as I brought those dots around, they got smaller because there's less paint on that, on that ball, okay? So I'm going to pick paint up again and I'm going to go back into the first dot. So one there, and then one, two, three, and four around. Okay, so I do that again around another one. So the biggest dot is the one where you first dip the paint in. So I'm gonna pop that there, and then walk it round. So one, two, three, four. Now they're getting quite close together. So you have to be careful. One, two, three, and four. We do it again so biggest dot here and then one two three four always take your paint again onto that first dot and then one two three and four okay and we do that you can carry on all the way round okay so <clears throat> I won't do the whole the whole thing so now we can build up. So we've got this side done. So you see we've got this space in between or we can carry on along the lines or we can sort of start working into this space as well. So we've got this lovely sort of, um, it's, it's dying to have a dot in it, isn't it? Because it's sort of rounded. So we can then go back to our, our tools, our larger rods. And I want a bigger dot here because as it's coming, I think you lost me for a minute so I'm back at this same point and I was saying that we need this area here where it's created this sort of um, shape is going to be ideal to add another dot in so we're going to just work into that space as well so you don't always have to stay on the lines we can work into that space too so I'm going to take another of my dotting tools I'm going to go with the purple I think the purple one which is one of the smaller sort of the first of the coloured rods and I'm going to take another one of my colours so I'm going to go with a bronze I'm going to pick that out and again I've pop popped the paint onto the tip of the of the rod there and then I'm going to take that down to the paper so again positioning it holding it over that place but not letting the, the actual tool touch the paper Okay, so with, with the ball tools, you touch the paper, but with this, you just sort of hover it over. So I'm just going to pop a couple of these around. I'm not going to do the whole, the whole thing. I'm just going to do this half side. So pop them in position. And then we can then use these to dot around these. So this time I'm going to do the dots sort of getting bigger and um, getting smaller rather than getting larger towards the end. Okay, so we're going to start. On the inside and work outwards so I'm going to go for I'm going to go back to that same dotting tool you'll find you've get you get your favorite sizes to work with um, but it's really up to you 
but obviously the larger you go the larger the dot so I've really loaded up my dot tool I'm going to put my first dot um, here and then I'm going to work it out so there's that's the one two three and four at the center okay so I know I don't need to do the fourth one this time so I pick up the paint again one two three the fourth one is my center one you can dot over it if you want to but sometimes um, most of the time you won't need to it'll just be there ready for you so again one two three and four to the center pick up more paint from here one two and three and your fourth is the center okay so one two three four one two three and that's your fourth okay so you can keep going there's no reason why you can't do another row around you can of course you can keep going around and round and round um, if you want to um, these ones this one here I've gone around this this circle and then I've gone around again and around again and I've got slightly um, bigger and changed the color as I've gone around so you can do that um, or you can just you know use each of the larger circles to go around it's really up to you um, so from here then I can continue working there or I can come back to working along my lines which seems to um, make sense but we've covered pretty much all the all the things that you're going to need to know to get started so I'm just going to really taper these lines out to the end so I'm just going to pick up um, whichever colour I want to use so I think I'm going to go back to the bronze I'm using the larger ball on the smaller of my sort of darker blue tools I've picked up some paint so dip your paint into your dip your ball end into your paint and then I'm going to pop that first dot there on my line and then I'm going to come outwards. I've slightly missed a the line there. Um, don't worry. I'm going to come outwards. So one, two, three and four. OK, and that seems to get me a nice even spread. Now, if you did miss the line slightly, don't worry. Just sort of continue in that trajectory and it'll sort of all you'll um, it'll sort of all work. But this is why it's good to move your work as you go, because you'll find that you might find it easier to dot towards you or dot away from you depending on how you work and also whether you're left or right handed so move your work rather than trying to reposition it's just easier for me to not move my work here so that I can keep everything in the right place on the camera okay so you can see just dotting those out and always count your dots so that you get the right number each time and don't be afraid to go over them either. You might make them slightly bigger, but if you find that they're not looking great or you get little air bubbles, I've got a tiny little air bubble there. Um, if you pick your paint up again, maybe don't load it up quite so much. Go back into that first one and come back over. And I'm just, I just touched over those and it just sort of popped a little bit more paint. So I didn't actually go right down to the paper okay so really that's all you need to know you just have fun playing and experimenting with the different tools different colors different shapes you can get really effective um looks if you graduate the color so if you go from you know a lighter color perhaps to a darker shade of that same sort of color palette and you can pick all neutral colors you can dot with just two or three colors and or you can use loads and loads of colors it's really up to you if you don't feel confident with picking colors then just go online and, and select a color palette even if it's an interior design color palette um, or something like that select select a color palette to work with uh, and go from there and let that be your inspiration but there's so much you can do so every technique i've shown you there in that short demo will cover all the designs i've done you can see actually I haven't mentioned dotting onto existing dots so you can see here I've got a dot and then I've dotted onto the dot um, now if you're going to do that you must wait for it to completely dry before you attempt to dot onto it otherwise it will just um, either give you um, splotchy marks in your paint or it will the paint will sort of just um, merge or blend um, or you won't get a solid circle so make sure that it's fully dry before you do the next layer other than that, have lots of fun playing and experimenting um, and getting your friends and family involved uh, and children. They love it too. So um, you've got everything you need to get going. So just have fun and enjoy. Bye.